Class math disciples were five. This is reminiscent, I believe, of the founding of America. Where the founders wanted a country without a king and a church without a pope. There are churches these days that have a functioning pope, but he's just not wrong. And finally on the pile, that final nail of lies in the appeal to the state. John 18. Let's see if we can find some lending wheels in the next few minutes. John chapter 18. <clears throat> Let's just pick it up with verse 28. John 18. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium, the governor's quarters. And it was early morning. But they themselves, what's this hypocrisy just dripping? What's the hypocrisy just dripping? But they wouldn't go in because they didn't want to be ceremonially unclean. They couldn't take the Passover. While well, they had the Passover lamb in their possession. Doesn't that just make you chill? Not at them, but at us. At me. But they themselves did not go into the praetorium lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? He was, you know, from other sources that he was pretty ticked off about having been raised from, from his repose early, early in the morning to mess with these Jews. They were nothing but a pain in the head. In other places too, I'm sure. But Pilate, they answered and said to him, if he were not, notice how they mocked this governor of Rome. If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. They were not interested in evidence. They were not interested in facts. They were interested in an objective that was so skewed to their agenda that facts and evidence were absolutely sidelined. And now, we increasingly see the attitude of the Jesuits that, were, that was institutionalized with the Jesuits in the 16th century who taught us so beautifully, and I use that beautifully in quotation marks, that the ends justify the means. <coughs> they never do. They never do. Note the pilot. Proclaims him innocent. For he says in verse 31, you take him and judge him according to your law. And he said, I don't, I don't have anything against this guy. And there's something between the lines I hope you catch here. <clears throat> Pilate does the same thing as the Jews did in the Sanhedrin. He examines the perfect spotless lamb. The Jews rejected him. Pilate basically says, looks good to me. Now think about that a second. This guy is a total pagan. He's a Roman governor. Study the history of what's going on in the Roman culture. He's a total pagan. And he examines Jesus Christ and says, looks good to me. But the ones who were supposed to know didn't know. Or rejected, I should say. They rejected the Messiah. It's so twisted, so flipped the gospel on his head. So Pilate puts in his, own, his own self in a box. I remember he got a letter from his mother, I mean from his wife, saying, I had a dream about this man. He's a good man. He's a righteous man. Don't have anything. Don't, don't go there, Pilate. Don't go there. But Pilate 
picks up the same reasoning of the Jews. It's called expediency. It's advantageous for him to go against his conscience. He's convicted, but he won't pull the trigger, so to speak. Pilate puts himself in the elephant box as I start to close this down. Look at verse 37. This is after Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. I'm, I'm not in competition with you, Pilate. It's okay, Pilate. You, you keep your governorship. It's okay. I'm not in competition with you. My kingdom is not of this world. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I've come into the world, that I should bear witness to the what? Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And then here's the ultimate cul-de-sac question for Pilate. What is truth? Let that question resonate in your mind for just a minute. What is truth? Those of you who've lived close to as long as I have, you can remember that there was one time that reality was reality. Now reality is a construct of the human mind or some agenda by some group. Reality doesn't matter. Does it? I'm not making this up. More than 200 years ago, our second president, John Adams, wrote these words. Facts are stubborn things. And whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the dictates of our passions, they cannot alter the state of facts and the evidence. Fast forward 200 years to our day. Harvard president, not too many years ago, wrote these words. His name is Henry Vasovsky, I think is how you say his name. He wrote, never underestimate the difficulty of changing false beliefs by facts. That's the Ivy League. Can you understand a little bit more of what's going on in our country? Let me read that again. No, never underestimate the difficulty of changing false beliefs by facts. My Bible says, and I still believe that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Jesus is ready to come. But he can't come until there's a people that stop sending, stop sending up their wayward ways for him to mediate. He needs a people who will follow him wherever he goes. So my question as I close here, Pilate asked the ultimate question, what is truth? It is clear from the text, and the Desire of Ages takes it a little bit farther, that he refused to wait for an answer. My appeal to you today, when you ask for me as well, is when we ask, what is truth? We will patiently, humbly wait for an answer. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven. Humble us that we may listen to your voice. Amen. Amen. 423. Glorious things of thee are spoken. And my favorite hymns. I appreciate you sharing with us.
same year he wrote Amazing Grace. Powerful. You remember the former slave trader who became a Christian and renounced his, his occupation? I want to read one line from a great hymn. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide. In the strife of truth and falsehood, for the good or evil side. Though the cause of evil prosper, yet his truth alone is strong. Though her portion be the scaffold, and upon the throne be wrong. Yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown, standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. Thank you, Father. That your faithfulness will prevail. And we appropriate more and more the very faith of Jesus, I pray, till we see you face to face. Amen. Amen.